All right, everybody, so we're going to pick up right where we left off again. We're going to use the same repo. We're in Mint NFT, where you just saw we created a program with Anchor to mint NFTs. So now we're going to build on that, and we're going to show you kind of how to flex some of those Anchor muscles with your program. And also, we're going to simulate selling an NFT for Soul. So let's go into our program, and we wrote everything in LibRS. So what I actually want to do is I want to restructure this repo a little bit. So I'm going to blow through that and fast forward and then we'll talk about it. So as you can see, we got LibRS and I set up these mods here and those are going to be our other Rust files. But it's still calling the shots with the program here and everything. But now we're just directing it to these functions that live in other Rust files. So Mint is still unchanged. It's just its own standalone function now. And we're going to do the same thing with cell. So we're going to create cell.rs. Now, as you guys can imagine, this is a pretty straightforward operation, right? So in go the use statements, we're just going to use a little bit of anchor lang, a little bit of anchor SPL. And we'll set up our pub function cell. And the reason I say this is a simple operation is because realistically, all we have to do is transfer the land ports or soul from the buyer to the seller, from the buyer to the NFT owner, and then transfer the NFT from the owner to the buyer, right? So pretty straightforward operation. One guy gets the soul, one guy gets the NFT. Now, the tricky part is we also have to create a token account. So let's add our outputs as we did before, and we'll see what the steps are. All right, so here's our steps. We're gonna transfer land ports from the purchaser to the owner. We'll have a little confirmation here. So this is step one. Then we'll create the buyer's token account, and then we'll transfer the NFT to them. So this is step three right here. And then our little confirmation output. So three major steps, one, two, three. Pretty straightforward. We've done this already here, create a token account. And we've done a transfer of land ports in a previous video early on in this playlist. So the next thing is we just have to implement transferring tokens. So pretty straightforward. Let's add our struct. And it's very, very similar to the one from Mint NFT. So I'm going to paste it. The only thing is we're obviously missing just the metadata stuff. But everything else is the same. So, and we're also missing the metadata program. Cool. So with this struct, we're good to go. And now let's go ahead and build the program for, or the transaction for creating a transfer of soul. All right. So there's our CPI context for transferring soul, right? So we're just using the transfer instruction from to pretty straightforward from the buyer to the owner. And keep in mind, as we'll reveal with our client side, we're going to have two wallets involved here. We're going to have to keep hand of the key pair for the buyer as well in this simulation. So we're going to go from one to the other. Pretty straightforward, and that's a system program. And then we'll have our confirmation that that was done successfully. And now let's create a token account for the buyer. All right, so there's our CPI context to do that. So this should look pretty familiar. It's the same thing we did already in our mint. We're just creating a token account this time instead of the mint authority, which in this case was just our wallet. This time it's going to be the buyer authority. So the buyer's wallet is going to set this thing up and get prepared to get transferred an NFT to it. And obviously we're going to use the same mint. So this is going to be a token account that's usable with the mint that we created. And we'll go select a mint that we've already created, maybe the one from the last video, whatever. Anyway, our last step is going to be transferring that NFT. So let's go ahead and build that. And of course, we're going to just transfer one. It's an NFT. There's only one of them. So we're going to transfer that single supply. And token program is going to own this one. And as you can see, the authority, we have to sign it from the owner of the NFT. And it's going to go from owner to buyer. And then we're going to have confirmation that that was done. So pretty good. So now we'll close out of these. And before I forget, I want to actually go to our tests 
and I want to change this one to test mint. And in our anchor toml, I want to call this test mint. And instead of this like wildcard, I just want to do test mint.ts. Copy paste that. And you guessed it. We're going to set up a new test for test cell. All right. And so with that being said, we're also going to go create our test cell.ts in here. And this is going to look very, very similar to the other test, of course. But what we want to actually do first, since we're going to need a buyer and we're going to need the buyer's key pair, what we need to actually do is go set that up. So I'm going to clear this out from the last video. I'm going to use Solana Keygen. New, and I'll check the help menu. And I'm just going to add a new key pair with no passphrase. We're going to set the output file and I'm going to set it to this file here. I'm just going to call it buyer1.json. And of course, I have to make this directory real quick. So I will do that. So I'm making that directory key pairs and generating a new key pair to that directory. And so that worked successfully. And now I'm just going to airdrop it. And you can actually just add the key pair on the end there to airdrop to that. And we'll see that we have two soul. And I'll give it a second and then I'll kick off another airdrop. And while that's going, we'll flip back to our code. So now we've got the key pair chilling in here. Cool. It's a DevNet key pair. Don't try to steal it. Anyway, we're going to our test cell. And we're going to actually copy some of the same stuff as this one here. So we're going to import anchor. And we're going to import mint NFT all the same as we did last time. And this time I want to actually use that previously used function that we've had where we kind of like can create a key pair from file. I just wanted to add that in here because it's going to make life easier for us overall. So we'll add that in there as well. I'll make sure that I add that to the imports. And so that'll make that available. And now we're going to set up our test. So I don't feel like typing all this out. So I'm going to do a little pasting. And we're going to set up our boilerplate again. So same as the last test, right? So we're going to set this up. We don't need the metadata program ID, but everything else is the same. So same configs here. And then Next, we're going to set up our test. And in our test, we're of course going to have some testing constants. And those constants are going to be things like the sale amount, right? So we're going to set the sale amount to be equal to one times anchor.web3.lamports per soul. So just one soul. And then we're going to set our mint. It's going to be a public key a new public key. And if we're looking at the previous video, I'm just going to go grab whatever the last one was from the last video. And uh, that's going to be this address here. So we'll go ahead and put that in here as our mint. And now we'll keep an eye on this because we're going to have this YouTube NFT token here. See, we've got one as our balance. That should go down to zero after our transaction. So that's going to be our mint. And then the next thing we're going to need to set up is the buyer. So we're going to need to set up a new key pair. We already did that here. So here's where we're going to actually use the, you know, get key pair from file function that we pulled in from the util. So that's right here. As you can see, we're just grabbing buyer1.json and I just spit it out here for our reference. Nice. So there's our constants. Now the first step is going to be derive the associated token account address for the owner and for the buyer. So that looks like this. We're going to go ahead and use the same method we used back here to get this token address here. And that's going to be the owner's token address. And now we can even do the same thing again to get the buyer's token address. And obviously this time 
we're going to just swap wallet for buyer as the owner. And that'll give each of us, that'll give each token address that we need. And so we'll add a little bit of output here to track our program or track our client, I should say. And finally, we're going to transact with the sell function in our on-chain program. So same exact step from here on out as down here. So we're going to set up the await program.methods.sell and we're going to set up a new anchor.bn and this is how you represent numbers when you pass them in as parameters. You have to use anchor.bn for serialization purposes. It just means big number. Now here's our accounts and our accounts are going to look pretty similar as the last one. We're going to just have the mint, the owner token account, the owner authority, the buyer token account, and the buyer authority. So last time we included a little bit more stuff for the metadata. So take the metadata out, duplicate our token account and our authority, and drop this metadata program, and we've got this right here. Because those are the only accounts we're going to need. Everything else is auto-genned, right, like the programs. So moving right along, our signers. This time our signer is going to be the buyer. That's why we need to hold on to that key pair. And we're going to do dot RPC. And now this isn't recognizing sell yet. We have to go ahead and do the anchor build. All right, so that just built. Now we're going to do anchor build and anchor deploy. So now I just want to check the balance of that account that we have as the buyer. You can see we got almost three soul in there chilling. And our Solana balance for our wallet is going to be 24 and a half almost so a little more than 24 and a half so now we're just going to do anchor run test sell and we'll check those balances when we're done so you can see we get a passing test so first things first let's see what our balances look like that one looks like it's less by one and that one is increased by one so we got a successful transfer of one soul and now let's go take a look at our NFT. So if we go back to our wallet here, you can see that the YouTube NFT balance has gone down to zero. So let's take a look at what the address is of our buyer. So here's the address. Let's take a look on Explorer what this looks like. And we should see under tokens, YouTube NFT, boom. There it is. Balance is one. So we successfully just sold an NFT using a program that we built and put on chain. So we're set now. That's that's everything that we need to do right there. We transferred the NFT and we also transferred the soul in one fell swoop. So that's how you do a sale, ladies and gentlemen. Appreciate you guys watching. And um, I felt like this one was a little bit easier to do than the mint NFT. And stay tuned for more NFT stuff coming up.